Hey folks, thanks for stopping by. Today's project is a fun one for the kids. It's a slide whistle. <whistles> Stick around, we'll get started. So for today's build, we need a couple things. First is a hardwood blank, uh, about eight inches long. Preferably straight grained if you can manage it. Um, you don't want the drill bit wandering uh, when we drill the hole. Speaking of, we'll need a, a long drill bit that'll cover the length of the blank and then a dowel of the same size that will fit in the hole and act as the slide. Let's get over to the lathe and we'll drill this out. So on my lathe I've got my smaller chuck with pen jaws in it and I'll use that to mount the blank. Now I've marked the center on the end of this so that I can get it in the chuck, tighten it loosely not to keep it from flopping around. I'll bring up the tailstock and use it to hopefully center the blank. So then when I top it, it'll run true. I'm close enough. Let me grab the drill chuck and we'll get it drilled. I guess this is going to wobble a bit when I first start, so eventually it'll clear out. Okay, with that drilled, let me get a 60 degree cone live center for the tailstock. Alright, with it between centers, let me turn it around with a spindle roughing gouge. So I'm going to turn a small, I guess the mouthpiece on this end, and then uh, I guess we can decorate it. We'll do some uh, some some lines with a burner down the length of it. Okay, let me take some sandpaper to it and then we'll get it parted off.
All right. Let's get over to the uh, band saw. Actually, let's go over the table and let me explain how a whistle works. So a whistle works by having incoming air be split and having some of the air go up and some of the air go uh, down into the body of the whistle. That splitting of the air is, is what creates the vibration that is the sound. Um, to do that, it, you have to have a flow restrictor. Uh, it's, it's called a fipple. Basically what it is, in our case, is a piece of dowel that I've flattened uh, one side of it so that when you place it in the body of the whistle, it re restricts all but a very little bit of air. You can see here um, in this one that I've uh, already done. So there's just a little bit of air that can get through and it's forced above or it's forced right onto that sharp edge. So when you're cutting this um, notch, it's very important that uh, you come back and then sand it or file it, clean it up so that it's uh, as sharp as an edge as you can get. That's that's really one of the things that will affect the um, um, the sound of the whistle. I'm, I haven't experimented with it enough to know what the optimum angle and size and all that stuff is but um, I do know that if it doesn't sound right play with the, the placement of the fipple as well as the um, sharpness of the edge here oh, and, and of course the other part is you can change the pitch of the whistle by moving the um, slider in and out which changes the length of this chamber so that's about it um, Let's go over to the bandsaw and we'll cut the notch. With the notch cut, the next uh, next step is to clean up uh, this notch and make it as smooth as possible. Now, I just cut a piece of dowel and went to the um, oscillating spindle sander and flattened one side of it just a bit. So what we do now is see which way it goes best, how it sounds. Typically you want the fipple to extend no further than the gap. And you want the small flat section to be in line with the notch that we just cut. Try the other way. Sometimes you get a better sound one way versus the other, and I haven't done enough of these to know what is exactly the perfect way to do it every time. That sounds better. Let me clean up. If there's any little fuzzies on the inside, be sure to get those out as well.
that'll do. A little bit more cleaning. So I've got some little fibers up top. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a drop of CA glue um, here under the fipple, slide that in, and hit it with some accelerator so that I don't have to uh, have to wait for it to dry. Accelerator. Once that's done, I'll um, take it to the bandsaw, nip off this bit of fipple and then go to um, my oscillating spindle sander and sand off a bit of this. We, we don't need this whole backside. It, it serves no purpose for us. So I'll um, sand it like I did this one, just so that it makes the mouthpiece smaller. So kind of see the next step. So chop it off, sand the back. I'll do that off camera. You don't want to watch me sand. So in order to fit the slider into the whistle, uh, I found that I actually have to uh, sand it down a bit. The, the drill bit does too good of a job in keeping a, uh, in making a nice straight hole. It's, it's some, it needs to not fall out, but you need to be able to move it up and down. And right now it's, it's quite tight, so I mounted um, a small chunk of dowel the size that I need between a collet chuck and a live center with the uh, point removed. It should give me a little bit of pressure just to keep it from whipping around um, as I sand it down a bit. And part of it could be that the dowel has a slight bend to it as well, so just keep sanding until it moves smoothly. We'll put some uh, beeswax on it later to kind of make it slick. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the chunk of uh, blank that was left uh, in the uh, pen jaws and glue it to the end of the dowel. And we'll turn that into the handle.
Well, that is it. There's no real assembly. You just stick the slide into the whistle and away you go. Thanks for sticking with me. Be sure to like, share, subscribe if it's your first time here. Comment. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Take care.